The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. In his presence it is, there is the fullness of joy, and at his right hand there are eternal pleasures forevermore. I want to welcome us to church this Sunday morning again. The choices we make in life is a reflection of who we are. Who we are is seen in the choices we make. You know, sometimes in life, when we do not have option, we query ourselves, we query others, we query God. And then we are angry why we don't have choice. We don't have option. But when options come, sometimes it poses even a greater problem. For example, a sister finds a suitor, a suitor. And then they go together and everything. Then another sister is having three, four suitors. All believers, confirmed believers. She finds herself in another kind of dilemma. As for being able, because at that point in time, her head is clouded. This morning, I want to speak on the sermon, Your Will, My Choice. We live in an age, we live in an era where God is gradually taking the back seat, even in the lives of Christians. When we want to make choices, we want to make choice in marriage, in career, even in acquisition of property or where we live, we find it more and more difficult to find God in the front burner. He's gradually being pushed to the background, to taking the back seat. So after we have exhausted ourselves, when things don't go right, then we'll come back to him. Today from scriptures, I want to show us practical example that it pays to follow the path that God has created for us. The best choice you can make in life is to follow the path of God. Why? He sees the end from the beginning. There are consequences. From the choices we make. In any aspect of life. There are consequences. When we follow the path of God. We understand that. The choices we make will not only end us here. There is life hereafter. Heaven is real and hellfire is also real. That we graduate to the lake of fire. Because the Bible tells us so. Our own limited opinion does not count where the Almighty speaks. Your will, my choice. God is speaking to us this morning. Those who are at a threshold right now. You are at a junction. A very critical junction in your life. And you need to make a choice. To quit or to stay. To stay or to quit. To buy or to refrain from buying. 
the choice you make without God will always come back to hurt you. The choices we make ignoring God will always come back to hurt us. It doesn't matter how foolish or how difficult God's path, God's will, God's pleasure, God's desire, God's instruction is for you. If we can follow it, we will rejoice in the end. So this morning we're going to look at scriptures, Old Testament, New Testament. And see what happens for those who made God's will their choice. His will, his choice, his decision, his instruction, his pleasure. When we make God's pleasure our choice, that means it's not about us. It's about him. Many times, sometimes, it is not the best choice we would have made. Or rather the popular choice we would have made. But if we trust him and we go by his own route, the result will be that we would, will not only win, we will retain our eternal life. Scripture says, what does it profit a man, even if you gain the whole world and lose your own soul? We see a lot of things. Why do we have pastors who are defenders of these ritualists, Yahoo boys? Why do we have people who were raised in Christian home and are still in Christian home whose parents are Christians? Why are their children into rituals? You see, that's why I said we now live in an era where God does not really count before we make decisions, critical decisions. And sometimes we have the, the foolishness, the foolish thinking, the foolish idea that we can appease him. The Bible says in Luke 1 verse 37, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Just a bonus. Look at Joseph. Hmm? Look at Joseph, look at Reuben. This is, this is extra. Look at Joseph, look at Reuben. You will understand that it pays to follow the path of God. Make God's will your choice. Reuben had the kind of opportunity Joseph had. Joseph had the kind of opportunity Reuben had. It was the opportunity to sexual intercourse. It was the opportunity to adultery. It was the opportunity to pleasure. It was the opportunity to satisfying sexual pleasure. Sexual gratification. The choices they both made affected their lineage, their generations until today. We cannot be selfish in the choices we make. We must take a hard look to see into the future the ramification, the impact of the choices we are going to make, we are about to make. But every time we pitch our tent with God, you don't even need to think. Because you know the result is going to be good. Are we saying that when we follow the path of God, it is easy? No. 
But sustainability is guaranteed. Stability in the end is guaranteed. Triumph in the end is guaranteed. Take note of the word I, that I keep using. In the end, the end, the end, the long run. Reuben was presented with the body of his father's concubine. He couldn't wait. That's the reason why we have ritualists in churches today. That's the reason why people join politics and then they give their bodies, the women. They can't wait. God is too slow by our definition. We're all going to die of hunger. The four lepers also had, they were faced with a hard choice. They didn't jeopardize anyone's life but themselves. Anyone's lives but themselves. And a miracle came out. Reuben had fun, satisfied himself, filled up his pleasure. These days it's difficult to distinguish between a, a Christian from a non-believer. I was in a vehicle the other day and the driver was playing music. Beautiful worship songs. Gospel song. And before you know it switched over, I was irritated. And I asked him, who are you? He got the lesson of his life that day. Go find out those who are Christians. Check their song list. You will discover once they play one gospel song, they play ten worldly songs that are even immoral to the unbelievers. That are abhorring to the unbelievers. The choices we make. Tell, us, tell everyone who we are. When you find a Christian for something as simple as music. Cannot make a choice. Between staying with gospel song that divides the spirit and the soul. Can't stay with it. But must play gospel. Worldly secular music that are even abhorring, enunciating to certain unbelievers. You have found somebody who is a double faced Christian. And the Bible says in the book of James, a double minded man is unstable in all these ways. That's not a blessing, that's a curse. That's a proclamation of harm, in case we don't know. The Bible is simply saying that if you become a two faced Christian, who your life is difficult to find out who, where you stand. By even how you dress, how you talk, how you live. Even as simple as the music you listen to. He has said that your future is also not guaranteed. Little things they say matter. And little thing matters. Reuben had his phone. Had his feel. Enjoyed it. Perhaps, maybe not once. Enjoyed his father's concubine. After all, he was the first son. The Bible said Jacob heard, but he did nothing about it. Years had passed. Joseph on his dying bed called to remembrance the deeds of all his sons. And he started by saying, Reuben, you are my strength. The excellency of my strength. Unstable as water, you shall not prevail. You won't prosper. It took decades for Moses to reverse that. Reuben did not only suffer. The entire Reuben tribe suffered. They became the smallest tribe. Benjamin harbored what you call LGBT today. Terrible people who will sleep and rape anybody. Today they are called celebrities. And the Israelites came to them and said, release those men of Belia who had committed this wardom. Today we celebrate people who commit immoral acts. Big Brother Niger, Europe, Asia, all of them. When you come and you have sex on live 
national te television, you are rewarded with millions. So you find church members killing themselves to be part of that show. Why? For the pleasure, like Ru Ruben, for a moment. The fame, the wealth, the attention that comes. But what people never care to find out is these celebrities, after those rasmatas, how did they end? We have seen repeatedly international call celebrities. They die of drug overdose. They commit suicide. The devil never tells you. The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of destruction. For the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So all of that money, that fame, everything the devil gives you, it is with the intent of destroying you. It is with the intent of stealing from you. And what will he steal from you since he's giving you? He's stealing your soul. He's stealing your place of in eternity with God. And to destroy you. Show me one celebrity. And tell me that that celebrity, mostly, most of them, not all of them, there are very few exceptions that don't have drug issues. They live high life. The moment you get into that circle, you lose yourself. People tell you where to go. They tell you what to do. And we are happy. Apparently, they are happy. Until the loneliness creeps in. First John 2. 15, 16. Say love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. For all that you see in the world. Is the lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. And the pride of life. All these things leads to destruction. Your will. My choice. Can we truly. Make God's will our choice. Can we suspend me, I, and myself and say, your will be done? Reuben didn't do that. And the entire tribe suffered. When it was a day for reckoning, the pronouncement was placed on him. So for those family members who think, well, it is that our sister that is... That our eternity is in jeopardy. Not me. I can collect the money from prostitution. It is that my sister, that my brother, that is a ritualist. Well, I can use the money safely. You can't outsmart God. When the curse was placed on Reuben, Jacob in his widest imagination could never have imagined that the curse will extend to the lineage. It was Reuben who committed adultery, who had sex. But when Joseph pronounced, Jacob pronounced the curse on Reuben, it affected his entire lineage. The tribe became so few, it took decades for Moses to rise up and say, the one who sinned, the soul that sinned should die. And, and that was what God did in Ezekiel 33. He said, no more. 18 and the 33, it was also repeated. No more. The fathers will not sin, and the teeth of the children will be set on the edge. Henceforth, it is the soul who sins that die. That completely dispelled their generational causes message. Way back in the Old Testament, it was addressed. That no, 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 it, you won't transfer anymore. It stops with the person, who, with the committer. Mm -hmm. The one who commits it, it stops. No, when they are propounding these generational causes, they don't refer, to, refer you to those scriptures. Even in the Old Testament, God addressed it. He said, no more. Benjamin. Benjamin was one of the favorite tribes. Being the younger brother of Joseph. They said, release those men that have done this bad, this terrible thing against God. Amazingly, the tribe of Benjamin said no. That's the kind of society we live in today. Majority wins the vote but majority we need to add another clause to it 
If majority wins the vote, does it mean majority was right? These days in election across the globe, where they steal elections. They steal election and give you the highest vote. But you didn't really get the highest vote. So you see, the more we live, the more we need to redefine some of our definitions. Majority wins the vote. No, we should ask, was it the correct vote? Did majority really win? With election stealing rigging in US across the globe, Africa, Nigeria today, democracy is in danger. Somebody will be declared winner and then court will obtain. That means something was wrong. The tribe of you, Benjamin, said no. And before you know, they rose up. I said they were going to go to war. That looked like the society we live in today. The word right and wrong is subjective. The entire crowd... Tribe said we have their back. Go and speak up against corrupt politicians. Speak up even against Yahoo boys. You will find Christians and pastors who will come to their aid, who will come to their defense. You will find people say it is because of them that we don't have robbery as we are supposed to have. That's like the tribe of Benjamin. But you know what? They suffered. The tribe of Benjamin was wiped out to... 600 was reduced to 600 people who had thousands tens of thousands they were reduced to 600 there is a way that seems right unto a person but the ends are the ways of destruction your will my choice we are looking for people God heaven is looking for Christians today who can stand out the lines between Christianity and worldliness is so blood right now. It's so blood. When a Christian stands out and you are giving a speech, a presentation, and the only people you attack are Christians, and that's it. We are having problems even amongst ourselves. The tribe of Benjamin said no. They were ready to go to war over people who committed incest, at atrocity. They multiply raped a man's wife till she died. The entire tribe stood behind them. I said, we're not bringing them out. What does that translate? They've done nothing wrong. Leave them alone. We are okay. How did the judgment come on Sodom and Gomorrah? It was something like this. The angels visited. Then the people showed up. I said, bring those men. We are gay. We need to sleep with these men. Ah, don't do that. Don't do that. They didn't know they were angels. That's how the judgment fell on Sodom and Gomorrah. But we have even Christians writing on behalf of gay, supporting them. Contrary to what the Holy Bible says. Mm. Your will, my choice. In Genesis, Genesis chapter 17, but the story actually started with Genesis 16. That was where the thought of a problem was conceived and it was given birth to. For the sake of time, you write down Genesis 16, Genesis 17. God had called Abraham and had told him, listen, I will bless you. It wasn't something Abraham did. It was God who chose him. Just like we didn't do anything, God reached out to us and we found salvation. Brought us into his own kingdom. Now we need to tell him how to change the rule in his own kingdom. That's the Christianity we find today. Yes, I am a Christian only by name. I do whatever I want to do. God, don't tell me what to do. Your will, my choice. Is that true for us today? Is God's will our choice? Or our will is our choice? Not his will. Sarah approached the husband 
I said, well, it's clear that I'm barren. Mm, there's a uh, Ahmed, the Hagar, or Haga, going to her, let her bear in my name. And Abraham did. Abraham did. And Hagar became pregnant, and Sarah was despised. Now there's a problem. The moment Hagar became pregnant, Abraham had figured out his future. His future was here. I'm taking you somewhere. Your will, my choice. If you have not gotten to a state where all of your body, your being says, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. And God expressly tells you we are going the other way. You may not appreciate the message the apostle is preaching this morning. But if you have been there, you will understand what I'm saying. Reuben was there. He made his choice. The tribe of Benjamin was there. They made their choice. Joseph found himself there. He took God's will. And he went to prison. Do you see? Reuben had sex. Had intercourse with the father's wife. He didn't go to prison. Not physical prison. But his soul was locked up immediately. His soul, his future was locked up. He was mortgaged. Pleasure of money. So I can buy clothes. I can buy even food. So I can buy cars. So I can buy this. I can buy house. Is it worth it? Mortgaging your soul. Your eternity. Is it really worth it? Are you going to compare 50 years, 60 years, 100 years with eternity? The return on investment is too bad. Sometimes we need to think like business people. A businessman wants ROI, in return on investment. He wants to see it clearly. You want to gain 70 years. The lifespan now has dropped to even 40-something in Nigeria. The largest, the most populous country in Africa. It has dropped to 40 something. Let's say you even live 70. Let's say you live the 100. You want to compare a 100 with, you can't place a number, eternity. It, it shows you are not even smart. But that's what we do. Reuben couldn't wait. He enjoyed it. Apparently, after the sex, he had fun, he had a great time. Joseph, on the other hand, took a decision that took him to prison immediately. See the difference? So when you follow the path of God, you suffer a lot of things. And the Bible is very clear. Those who will walk godly will suffer persecution. That's the reason why it's not the attractive choice for us. You don't want to bear that hunger. So you have to sleep with somebody. You don't want to bear that hunger to be seen that you people cannot buy the things you need to buy. So you have to become a ritualist, a fraudster. Reuben had fun. Joseph chose God. The will of God became his choice. And instantly he went to prison. He faced humiliation. So these days, we tend to trace the will of God to living a life of ease, easiness, everything, sweetness. That's not always true. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all they needed was to bow down before the image. They chose the path of God. They ended up in the fiery furnace of fire. Apostle Paul, some me delivered, we have looked at this here in this church. Some me delivered all that he allowed them to go through. He delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but he didn't deliver Peter. He didn't deliver Paul. He delivered John, but he didn't deliver James, his brother. The choice is his. Oh, you didn't think of that. No, Peter was successfully crucified. And then he said, turn me upside down. Paul's head was chopped off. All they told him was, acknowledge the emperor and refute this your claim. 
that Jesus is the ultimate. He said no. They chopped off his head. It is hard to find Christians who will do that. You will see somebody who says he's a bonny believer. They come into the government and you suddenly see their fire going out. Day by day, day by day, day by day. You see them in the comfort of every person. They dance to worldly music. Once you start seeing those signs, compromise has entered. Then you become the odd one out. When you insist on doing the right thing, they tell you you are not a team player. That's a new word now. When you stand for God in your place of work, they say it's not a team player. She is not a team player. So, and these people attacking you are Christians also, supposedly. So they have looked for a term that you are not a team player. Uh, Joseph went straight from, from being the man in charge to prison. It was humiliation. In the prison there, God also was with him. He didn't go to prison before God. God went ahead before him. So there are signs you see that even when you are going through rough times and hard times, you still keep seeing God with you. There are signs that tell you he's with me. He's with me. God wasn't standing outside the prison. He was in the prison. That's why the Bible says God made him to find favor. God couldn't have been outside. He was within. The choices you are making are they choices that will send God far away from you or keep him with you. Your will, my choice. Or is it my will, my choice? You see, in a country that is supposed to be called God's own country, you hear people protesting, those who are pro-abortionists. My body, my choice. Yeah, that's the slogan. It means my body. I can commit as many murders as I need to commit. It is my body. I can kill these innocent, bonbon children as many times as I want to. It is my body. But if my mother has aborted me, had said my body, my choice, I wouldn't be here. That's why a, a, an American president said, the funny thing about those who are pro-abortionists is that They've all been born. <laughs> they, are, they are already here. They, they've all been born. If while they were in their mother's womb, they were interviewed to say, okay, you are pro-abortionist. Well, unfortunately, we still don't need you. We need to kill you. Then they will protest. Everyone who is a proponent of abortion have already been born. That's what the president said. A wise man. He said, that's the problem he has. They've all been born already. They've all been born. Joseph went to prison. These are bonuses the Spirit just wants us to have. To put proper perspective. Your will, my choice. Me, 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 There are consequences for every choice we make. And Abraham was 90. So that's the story. Ishmael came. Abraham had figured out his future. Finally, his hair has come. Sometimes when we figure everything out too much, let's be careful we don't figure God out. Let's be careful we don't cast him out. Sometimes our no no is the, is the very thing that put us in the path against God. Abraham was 90 years old and nine, 99. The Lord appeared unto him. You see, God is patient. He waited for him to exhaust himself, to finish, to satisfy himself. He allowed Reuben because Reuben knew better. The laws, the rules, the instructions were there. Very clear. He deliberately went and slept with his father's wife. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Let me give you a revelation. 
It was the first time God was, Abraham was meeting God as the Almighty. He was revealing himself to him as El Shaddai, the Almighty, the big breasted one. The names of God are not for you to memorize and cram. Listen to what the apostle is saying. It is God revealing himself to these individuals. Let him reveal himself to you. Huh? It's not for us to cram Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah this. All of those names you call, it was his revelation to an individual. Let him reveal himself to you. One thing I have discovered him to be in my case, he is my defender. He is my, institutions have been shut down on my account. I have been in a place where all the natural physical disadvantages was to my side. And when he stepped in, he sent all of them out. So I know him as my defender. I don't need to look for a Jewish name. When he said this to me, he said, people don't understand. Christians don't understand that I want to reveal myself to them. They keep memorizing my revelation to Moses, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. What about to James? That was why when he asked the disciples, who do men say I am? From the snap of the finger, they had answer. Who do you say I am? Now that is a great question. Maybe someday we'll have a sermon on that. Who is God to you? And don't tell me he's almighty. That was how he revealed himself to Abraham. Have you seen him like that? We are trying to run zeros his relationship with other people. Instead of focusing on having a relationship with him, I know him to be my defender. That is why when I'm having a case in my place of work, in the office, in the community where I live, when I have a case, I know the other side will lose. Because he has revealed himself times with that number to me as my defender. And that's the reason why I don't look for people to join my fight. I'm giving out the secret today. He has revealed himself to me as my defender. When I was weak and powerless and could not fight the army that was against me, he rose up and closed down an institution. And the people he used, I've not even met them. They don't know whether I exist. It took years later before I met one. And he said, oh, are you the one? So I know him to be my defender. In 2022, who is God to you? And he said to him, walk before me and be that perfect. When messages come, let's know that it's in this the message. God is saying something to us. Messages are not for entertainment. That's why I get bothered when people sound, uh, are just shouting and just shouting. At it's not fun. That is God telling you something. He said, I am the almighty. Walk before me and be perfect. You see, almighty, all powerful. That means that thing you got through shortcut, I could have done it. That's what he's saying. It was a rebuke to Abraham. Walk before me and be perfect. Even at 90 and 9 years old, I can still do what I said I want to do. Oh, that's the message. Walk before me and be perfect. I am almighty. Abraham was very happy. He was consoled that Sarah had the wife, had that wisdom. Not to frustrate his empire. But to key into his, his plan. To have an heir. Abraham was happy. Instantly he has generated his future. He didn't waste time going into Hagar. As now Sarah said, he said, okay. Only God can imagine the talk exchange between Hagar and Abraham. It was sex. No fight. There was emotion. 
So he had told her, don't worry. Your future is settled. You are giving me my hair. Why do you think Hagar, Nassau Sarah, has despised? If a woman will not talk while having sex, the man will talk. Especially under that condition, he will make all the promises that he had made to Sarah, make it to Hagar. So the Bible says when Hagar got pregnant, she despised Sarah. And Sarah dealt hard with her, and she fled. And God met her and said, return back and go and submit yourself. Abraham, don't create trouble. My will, your choice. And when she returned back, Sarah came to Abraham and said, my mistake is upon your head. I wasn't the one God called. It was you he spoke to. I tag along with you. I gave you a counsel. So you, you were selfish. You agreed to it. Because you didn't place enough value on me. Instantly, Abraham re responded by saying, Once you read down from verse 1 to 14, for the sake of time, God now reiterated again his promise to him. I'm establishing my covenant with you. And your seed, he kept using the word seed, one, singular, your seed, your seed, your seed, your seed. And Abraham said, oh, wonderful, it's true. I know who you are talking about. Oh, that Ishmael will be before you. And the Lord said, no, it's not Ishmael. What? It's not Ishmael. When I called you, I called you and I blessed you with you and your wife. So when I was blessing you, I was blessing you and Sarah. How do you think? How did you not bring Hagar in and you, th and you thought of... Those who think they use prayer or fasting to change God's mind, they are stupid. You can't change the will of God. You can change your own outcome, more, not the will of God. Because the will of God gives you an outcome. When you don't follow his path, you get your own outcome. It, 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 it doesn't mean you change his will. You can't change his, his will. You can't change his will. And he said, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and all that stuff. Then look at verse 15. I just finished giving you from verse 1 to 14. Let's look at from verse 15 and see where the drama showed up. Verse 15, and God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, do you see that? Because when I called you, when I spoke with you, you were a married man. Hagar was not your concubine. So I was talking to you and your wife, Sarah. But you invented something because Abraham was so happy it was Sarah who brought the thought. Men are men. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai, thy wife. Sarai means princess. Sarah means noble womanhood. So God had to change the name. So then listen, princess. No, she's not a princess. She's a noble woman. She's going to carry her child. She's a woman. That's right there. God changed the name. Not princess, noble woman. As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be, noble woman. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Did you see that? What Abraham responds, you'll be shocked. Yea, I will bless the so you will understand this message, your will, my choice. Abraham got to a point where he was conquered. Many of us are too strong. You have not gotten to that point where you are struggling with God as far as the choice you want to make, the next decision you need to take, the next action you need to take. For those who are there, they will appreciate this message more. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Did you see that? Yea, I will bless her. Somebody will say, why didn't God warn Abraham? Of course, God warned him from beginning. He said he was going to make him great. Abraham was already a married man, so he was... He, God was speaking to Abraham and Sarai. 
I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old, and shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? So you see, Abraham, like I said, immediately Hagar took in. Abraham had figured out his future. He had his plan set. May God upset your plan. If you have never had your plan upset by God, you are on the wrong path, most likely. There is no human on earth that will walk with God whose plans will not be upset by the Almighty. Because many times we run along without calling Him. Many times we run along, we don't tag Him. Hmm. And Abraham said unto God, look at verse 18. Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Did you see that? God just told him that your wife will give birth. Abraham is now negotiating that his mistake be made a miracle. Not all mistakes become miracle, please. Particularly the mistake that is trying to upset the miracle. It doesn't become a miracle. Uh-huh. Why, why was Abraham doing that? Abraham has spoken to Hagar. Abraham has given his future to Ishmael. So when God spoke and said, that's not the direction I'm following, Abraham became an advocate. Abraham became solicitor general. Abraham became an attorney general. Abraham was not advocating on behalf of Ishmael. In the first place, you created Ishmael. Many of us, all of us at some point in time have created an Ishmael. The Ishmael in the form of one decision we made. One action we took without following God's word. Now the result has come. We are trying to lobby God to accept it. No, God is not National Assembly. God is not Congress. God is not Senate. You can't lobby him. You can't lobby him. God does not sit down. When he says, come, let us reason together. It's not a yardstick for you to bring something into his word. Let's reason together based on my terms and standard. Mm. Let me explain that scripture to you. Come, let us reason together. It is based on his terms and conditions. Only you have no impute. Your impute is yes, Lord. That's the only impute that goes through. Any other one does not enter. It is rejected. We seem to God will not allow us to turn his family to the way we have turned our family. Where it is our children who decide what they eat. Who decide the clothes they wear. Against what we have said. You can't run that nonsense in God's kingdom. And now that some of us are having a hard time. Many of us have created multiple Ishmael. In the music we listen to. How we dress. Where we go. The company we keep. The things we do. We are just giving birth to Ishmael by the day. The head dick Ishmael gave Abraham. Abraham was advocating for Ishmael. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac in case. When I saw this, I got the revelation that how our forefathers are even smarter than us. You know, the name they give to children in those days has to do with something. The name Isaac was not a divine name per se. It was a rebuke to Abraham. Ah. So when you call your native name, somebody remembers story of something that happened. That's what God did to Abraham. That's what he did to Hagar. The affliction that Hagar was going through, he said, call his name 
Ishmael, affliction. When he spoke, Abraham laughed. He said, the son will be Isaac. It will be a rebuke on you. Every time you call him Isaac, you remember the day you were stupid. Let me give you the true meaning of Isaac today. Abraham laughed. So God said that would be his name. That would be his name. Sarah afflicted Hagar. And God said, call the child's name affliction. Ishmael. He reminded Abraham, when I called you, it was you and Sarah, not you and Hagar. But since you laughed, call the child. Laughter. Isaac. So every time you call him, you remember the day you were stupid. So Abraham didn't make the mistake twice. So you don't run away from your past mistake. You don't ignore your past mistake. Carry it before you so you won't repeat it. He said, call his name Isaac. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And Abraham was still advocating. And he said, don't worry, I will bless Ishmael. Twelve princes will come out of him. However, the covenant is with Isaac. Wait till, that Abraham has not given birth. Abraham said, well, it was me and my wife that agreed. Who told you because you and your wife agree, you people are now a higher authority to the most high. You will see churches gather and try to use God's own word against him. Yeah, the Bible says where two or three of us are agreed. When we touch anything shall be done. And what they are praying for is clearly against God's will. Oh, so you want to use his own word against him. You are picking one portion of his word to violate another portion. And you think he will honor it. No, don't worry. With the money, submit it to God. Use it to do philanthropic work. Go and bless houses. Bless servant of God with the ritual money. <laughs> the ones who God wants to help to say don't take, he will tell them not to take. The ones he will also tell use the money is free of charge. It does not translate to anything to him. However he wants to do it. But if he comes and says don't take and you take, he, then you are a partaker. Come and see pastor sweating for tight, for seed. So this is, we think we can go around. If, as, if Abraham could not persuade God to accept Ishmael as the covenant child, neither can you and your pastor change God's clear word. There is never a time God will befriend iniquity no matter who is sinning it. God will not befriend sin no matter who is sinning it. It's a lesson. Abraham couldn't change God's mind. It was Isaac from beginning. It remained Isaac even after Ishmael had come. Why do we complicate our lives? Why do we want to make things difficult? I have seen when you stand with God, you suffer more in the hands of Christians than unbelievers. Why? You are what they can't be. You stand as judgment reminder to them every time. And so they hate you. But the Bible has said those who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, not embracing. Caught people, unbelievers are embracing and clapping for you. Something is wrong with you already. If you don't know that, then shame on you. Those are caught members. They are clapping and embracing you. They feel very comfortable when you come to them. When you are in their midst, they feel comfortable. You should go and weep for yourself. Weep for your salvation. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 to 7. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your or with all thy heart, and lay not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, he didn't say some, he didn't say most. He said all your ways, every time. Acknowledge him. Roma Reigns want everybody to acknowledge him. God says, no, it is me you should acknowledge. Not Roma Reigns. Acknowledge me. In all your ways, acknowledge him. We have redefined this scripture to say, in certain ways, we acknowledge him. That's the reason why you are friending that man that is an unbeliever. 
That's the reason why you are in relationship with that unbeliever. That's the reason why you are encouraging people around you who are ritualists. That's why you are using their money. Because in that aspect, you don't want to acknowledge God anymore. Parents can't talk to their children when they are erring because they are adults. God says, in all my ways, acknowledge me. Galatians says, say, if one be overtaken by fault, you who is spiritual, restore. We don't. We don't talk. Because we don't want to lose favor. We don't want to fall out of favor with them. So we shut our mouth. You are not acknowledging him there. His will is not your choice. It's a deep message. It's a message of rebuke. It's a message of slap. It's a wake-up call to Christians. There are consequences for every choices we make. We can't keep ignoring God and think at some point we accept our, our adulteration. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. Did you see that? So you see, he will direct your path. God has a path. You have a path. Until you acknowledge him, he won't direct you to his path. It's as simple as ABC. It is when we acknowledge him that he directs us. How do we acknowledge him? Live by the dictate of his word. Don't redefine the Bible. Don't rewrite the scriptures. Don't rationalize the reason why you are committing sin, why you are doing something that is wrong and you say, well, God understands. God understands so well what you are doing and he also understands when you go to hell. He understands very well that what you are doing will lead you to hell. For Abraham, his own choice was between Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael is already. Isaac is yet to come. And yet God says, quit what you have. And go for the one that you don't have yet. Some of us are in that position. You are in a relationship and God has been telling you. Say quit this relationship. You are in a fraudulent business and he's saying quit this one. And people are telling you what will you eat if you stop for one night. If you stop defrauding people what will you eat? What will your family eat? How will your people survive? God told Abraham, you have created Ishmael. Ishmael is not my covenant person. Isaac is. That's why I explained to you. Ishmael is. Isaac is not. God said, quit the is and embrace the is not. Quit the is and embrace the yet. For some of us, it is opposite. It is embrace the is and quit the is not. So that's why when you preach to certain people, they tell you, how can I live? How will I not live? I'm into prostitution. How will I survive? He will make a way. He says, trust me. God is speaking to us as he's speaking to me. He's speaking to everybody. Hereafter, some things, decisions, we need to make some decisions. See, God never leaves you alone. If we are careful, except you are in a church where the pastor is an entertainer. In Reverend Grace Ecclesia, we hear from heaven. God's word will always precede the next action you need to take. Many times we are not careful to see he's already giving us the counsel for what is coming. Because it means the choice you are about to make will look foolish. It will inconvenience you. But that's what he's telling you you need to do already. By the sermon this morning. You are, for some of you, you are moving from what is known now to the unknown. You might be moving from what is already established to what you see that it doesn't even have future. You think it doesn't have future. Look at Potiphar's wife establishment if you don't embrace her you are facing an uncertain future and the closest one was prison but not knowing that heaven has created a link up road 
from the prison to the palace. Who could have seen that? Who could have seen that? As believers, men who walked with God didn't need anybody to second guess them, to confirm what God has said. It's an insult to him. Has God spoken to you? Has he shown you from his word? Has the spirit put it in your heart and you need somebody to confirm? To confirm God. So that person is higher than him. Abraham, Moses, these key people never ask for confirmation. Would you trust God enough? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not some. Not some. All of it. People who experienced the power and the provision of God had to make decisions that made them look stupid. Elijah just finished speaking. And he said, God, have a witness. He said, go to the brook. Brook? I should live where human beings are and go to the brook. He said, they have commanded the ravens to feed you. Raven bed. Raven is a very shy bed. How can raven bring food to me? But that's what happened. Elijah washed that brook dried up. The water dried up. You can't predict God's miracle. Why didn't God keep that water perpetual? Why didn't God make Elijah speak to this brook that is dried up now? Let it be filled. No. Why? Because God had a mind to take him to another level. At this time around, he was a poor woman. The widow at Zarephath. Why do we think it is rich people that can bless us? That's the way the world thinks. Go and read scripture. God has used people who have little or nothing to transform the lives of his servants. Huh? Why? Because God sees them as qualified for blessing. They thought they are blessing. You know God wants to bless you through them. If he uses a rich man, he says, I nah, bless you. So most time he doesn't use the rich people. He uses people he can bless because they blessed you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. My will, your, your will, my choice. Or is it my will, my choice? How do you live today? Is it your will, your choice? Or you want it to be his will, your choice? Cool down for Jesus. The promise he made, he has not forgotten. Why are we getting worked up? Why do we sometimes think, that, oh man, this is over. That was what drove Abraham into Hagar. Because tomorrow somebody will drop a cancer that will resonate with you. So you don't create your own Ishmael that, will, that you will regret later. Let go Ishmael so Isaac can come. Let go Ishmael so Isaac can come. As long as Abraham was holding to Ishmael, how will Isaac come? Your hands are already filled. That's why they are closed. Anything can enter. Release your hand. Let that bed go. A better one is coming. Not just a better one, the desired one. Do not cast God aside while figuring it out. That's your big future. Finally, Abraham learned the lesson. How did I know? Genesis 25, verse 5 and 6. Look at it. Genesis 25, quickly, 5 and 6. Time, time has gone far. Genesis 25, 5 and 6. Genesis 25, 5 and 6. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Hey, hey, finally, he got God's memo. He had planned with Ishmael. Ishmael was the heir. You saw him. In, so you see, Abraham was not always perfect. And that's the thing. God had to rebuke him. He said, be perfect, be matured. God wants you to experience him. Stop, stop experiencing him through other people. Experience him for yourself. Grow, make mistake with him. Let you be with him. But unto the sons of the concubines, 
which Abraham had. Abraham gave gift and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. Did you see that? Finally, after Genesis 70, Abraham got the memo in, in Genesis 25. And God shook him. Shortly after Isaac came, God shook him. I said, you see? See, Abraham fell to the bottom. I mean the bottom, the very bottom. Some of us need to hit the rock bottom. Until that ball that you drop, that is falling, until it hits the bottom, you won't see it bounce up. Hold on. You are like a ball falling. You only bounce up when you hit your rock bottom. <laughs> the ball will continue to fall until it finds a solid thing to hit. The moment he hit, all the impetus he used in falling is going to come up again. Then you can catch it and say you are not falling anymore. You might be going through a rough time. See yourself as a ball falling. You will hit the solid and you will bounce up. Abraham finally got the memo. He had concubine, but this time he was defined. He knew they had no business being the covenant people. He sent them away. Gave all that he had to Isaac, not Ishmael. So, in, in Genesis 25, he got the memo. Hmm? Do you know even God tested his, himself? Jesus Christ faced the same thing. The same hard choice. In Matthew's Gospel, as we close. Verse 26 and 39. And he went a little further. Matthew's Gospel 26, verse 39. And he went a little further and fell on his face. Have you ever fallen? Have you ever fallen? And prayed, saying, oh, my father. Jesus was entreating his father. This is Jesus, the son of God, God who became flesh. He was entreating for those of us mugus who think your stupid fasting can change God's will. Jesus fell on his face and said, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. That is the cross of the sermon. See Jesus, see choice. Wait, before he became man, there was an agreement, right? He was to come and die. But now being in flesh for the first time and the things he's seen, what the spirit now opens his eyes to see was going to go through. He was trying to renegotiate. I love my father. People will hate you for all they can. It's their business. Integrity matters a lot as a Christian. Integrity is your self-preservation. Many Christians, we don't have it. So to cover yourself that you, you are back into government, you have to sleep with people. And you deliberately did it and told yourself that later you ask God for forgiveness. God is not a man. You can't fool him. You are using money from rituals, from Yahoo people to build a church building. And you say you are doing the work of God. My goodness. He's not a man. You can't fool him. Paul look at Simon. He said, your mom, uh, uh, Peter, he said, thy money perish with you. So everything you put that money will perish. Are you helping God? If he called you, let him do his work. I will build my church. That's what he said. If he can build the spiritual one, he can build the physical one much faster. Mm -hmm. It is lack of trust. That's the reason why we cut corners to build buildings. We are not even building souls. We are building buildings. Now he called me, may build church if he want to build them. I won't solve my integrity. I won't solve my name. I won't beg anybody. I won't lobby anybody to contribute to his work. Let him do his work. Just like, how do I teach? How do I preach every Sunday? I don't know. He speaks through me. So he will build the church through himself. By himself. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, not, I, not as I will, but I will be done. 
Even Jesus was faced with what you are. That's why the Bible said we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He now had a choice. Wait, oh. But Luke 1 37 says, For with God, all things are possible. So when he said, If it be possible, he knew it was possible. But God will not, because that will make him a front star. He will have no integrity. If you have reached an agreement with people, stand by it. Stand by it. If God didn't change his mind, did he allow his son himself to change his will? Then you thought because you are fasting and praying. How dumb can we be? You want to use one part of his word to violate another part? That is stupidity in its attitude. You, are, you want to use a portion of the scripture to violate another portion. And you expect the same God who gave both scriptures to honor it. Let's rise up for now of it. Your will, my choice. Abraham faced it. Thank God they learned his lessons. Reuben faced it. He didn't survive it. He didn't come out. The tribe of Benjamin had it. They didn't come out of it. The tribe was almost wiped out. Joseph faced it, he chose, he went to prison. This is we are living Christianity of comfort. Where everything is comfort. There are hard choices we need to make. We have a job ahead of us. It's not popular opinion. This is not the world where it is popular opinion. Where government go to ask if the majority of people say they want to be drinking alcohol between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. And, and the government say, well, we don't have a choice. Majority say that's what they want. No. Don't treat us as majority. Don't treat us as group. Treat us as individual. You will respect my wish. I have been involved in quiz, in exam at, at, at international level where 80 something percent who said this was the correct answer? We are wrong. So that's the kind of life we live in. Before you say majority said this, find out the background of the majority. Find out the individuals. Find out who they are. So we need to practice deeper democracy. Not just people saying it. See on this show, one person, because they're after the money, from one text message, from one phone, you can, you can, you can, you can vote as many times as possible. And at the end, they say somebody win. For me, they are all losers because they are immoral set of persons. But that's the direction of the world. And Christians are dying to, to appear on those celebrity shows. Yeah. Where their sexual escapade is online. And when they come out, they give them 50 million. Best graduating student, 2,500. Yeah, recently it happened in the country called Nigeria, in the state. Best graduating student. They gave a big fat check of 2,000, maybe 2,500 Naira. Yeah, it's an insult. Best graduating student. 2,500. A girl opened her private part and have sex nationally while everybody are watching. 50 million. Brand new Jeep. A, a, a record deal. A contract. The ambassador of a company for showing a private part. That's why these Yahoo boys now say education is a scam. Because the same government who is saying people should be educated, you are discouraging education by your own actions. Best graduating student, 2,500. Laptop. So the guy will take the laptop and go use it to do Yahoo. Because once, he, once he's doling that money, they will call him to come and donate. That same guy will use that same laptop, defraud people, and build a, be, donate a building to the government. And the government will celebrate it. Trust God. You will get to where God wants you to be. The road might not be easy, it might be bumpy, but you will get there. Your will, my choice. It's a hard thing. But if we will do it, even Jesus, even Jesus felt what you are feeling right now. He saw the uncertainty. He saw an easy route. 
But then he remembered. We don't break principle. Our integrity is tied to it. So these days when people say, wait, now they ain't there, everybody, they talk bad of her. This is my first take is that maybe that's the right guy. Because we're not living in a world where majority is always wrong. Why? Because majority want to do what they want to do, how they want to do it, where they want to do it. They, are not, they don't want to subject themselves to any authority, especially the authority of the Most High. My body, my choice. If your mother said, my body, my choice, will you be alive today? Let's go.